And now for the exciting conclusion of Welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Uh, this is the, going to be the follow-up video on the Chevy 2 wagon. Uh, last you saw, Rich got the rear end gears all set up. However, we had to do some finagling to be able to get the axles to work with the brakes that the customer had picked up to be able to get the wheels to sit correctly on the brakes and the axles. Uh, so anyway, that's where we're started from here. If you haven't watched that video, Pause this, go back, watch that, then come back here, because otherwise you're missing half the story. And uh, yeah, let's get back to work. So one of the easiest ways to change these uh, lug studs out when the axle is out of the vehicle is a ball joint press. Pops them right out, pops them right back in. I gotta remove the lug nut studs so that I can trim about 10 thou off the outer diameter it's actually the right size outward, out towards the end, but uh, I'm just going to touch it up in the old lathe and uh, make it happen because sometimes that's what you got to do. You just got to do stuff that you don't expect. Horseshoes dropping in the bucket. Keep safe and lubricated. So that actual shaft's all back together. I used the ball joint press to, over on the vise to uh, hold it and put the lug nut studs back in it. So now, just going to get that in there, and it is. Put our new pin in. Get some Loctite on my bolt. Oh, it's got holes on both sides. Where's my pin? It's got a big sloppy hole and a hole that's too small. So I guess we'll use the sloppy hole. Put some Loctite on me. Good. Holy cow, it fits correctly now. That's amazing. Nice. Now my hats fit my heads. Perfect. My lathe was a little chattery. I noticed my 
carbide bit is chipped, so I probably screwed it up. Somewhere along the line, my spindle speed was for hard cast. And I went with like a three inch diameter, so I might have been a little bit slow on my spindle speed, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to look good. You're not going to see it. All I needed to do was remove enough material to let the hat fit and then put it back together. Now that's done. I'm going to have my calipers put on my rear trick flow cover made in the USA. It's actually pretty nice. No! Trick flow. Made in the USA. Nice piece, actually. See, we got a serviceable drain plug so you don't have to remove the cover every time. There was a ton of metal inside of this uh, in between the bearings. Um, so something bad happened to this rear end. I'm going to guess a burnout blew up a spider gear or something. Because um, I think what I'm finding is the there's normally a washer behind the uh, spiders. And the washers were behind the axle spiders, but there were no washers behind the small spiders. So I'm wondering if the one of them blew up and it fell out and then it got washed up. Well, it probably got ground up by the ring gear and then it got washed up into the cavity in between the front and rear pinion. But I cleaned all that out and uh, I think we'll be in good shape. My, uh, my pinion setting measures exactly what it needs to be. My backlash is at 6 thou. Um, I think it's going to be just fine. Let's get the cover on, get it filled up with fluid, get tires on this thing. And then I'll have to look at my list because i got some other stuff to do. It's going to end up back on the alignment rack after all this because um, I did a baseline setup. But uh, we're moving right along. Thanks for coming along for the ride. It's a really nice piece. Put a little sealant on those uh, pressure bolts just to help prevent leaks. Uh, some of you guys were screaming into this, screaming at the TV, saying you're not going to put those stainless steel bolts in the cast iron without any seas, are you? It was, and I thought I should probably not do that. So we're going to clean all these threads just to make sure they're good. That one was extra nasty. put some anti-seize on my bolts and then we will lock this ah that was close that almost opened me up and we'll lock this cover down and for those of you who don't know this is a thread chaser not a tap it just cleans up the threads and makes your bolts go in cleaner torque setting, but still. Thank you for purchasing this cast aluminum differential support cover. With lightly preloaded support posts placed against the center of each bearing cap, the cover will greatly reduce the rearward deflection of the carrier bearings during hard launches. The rearward forces are transferred through the support posts to the cover and cover bolts. 
Work the bearing cup load studs to a maximum of 10 foot-pounds. Do not over tighten as damage may occur to the bearings by creating an out of round condition on the bearing caps. So don't make those too tight. Apply a small silicone sealer to the threads. I did that. Tighten the jam nuts to 10 foot pounds. All right, so 25, 10, and 10. That's easy enough. Ten foot pounds. Install our drain plug. The nice thing is the fill plug for this guy's got a magnet on it, so you can inspect what's going on in there just by pulling the, the fill plug out. That's pretty cool. Makes it serviceable. All done. Time to put some fluid in her. And I can hang the wheels. What's that there? Shouldn't that be there? Hmm. How are you going to service that bolt? Bolts need to go in from the front. Go in from the front, that way they can be serviceable. The back ones are serviceable. Let me get these switched around for our lockouts. <clears throat> I guess I'm going to have to just take that bracket off. I'm going to have to take that bracket off and relocate it over. Otherwise the sway bar is going to work its way across. It's not being held in position. Sway bar is in the wrong spot. I mean, it's in the right, right spot. It's in my way. It's definitely better squared in the chassis now, though. Oh, this bolt galled on me, so I'm going to have to cut it out, which is a bummer. This bolt here galled on me, so I'm going to have to get creative with him. I don't think I want to heat him up because I don't want to mess up all the powder coat. At least not with the flame wrench. Taking that back off to move washers. No. Let's find out. Just because 
put the washers on the wrong side of the spacers. are in. What else do we have on this list of stuff to do? Classic performance parts. Well, I got those rear studs to uh, pull final torque. Um, basically, it just seemed like it, I, I felt like I was actually stretching the bolts, but what it's doing is when I press those studs back in, they probably weren't seated as much as they needed to be. So as I'm pulling torque on them, it's seating those studs. So if you, you, know, you have the studs out and then you put it back together with an impact, you may end up with a loose wheel because those studs will end up working out and then you have loose lug nuts. So you always have to be sure you use a torque wrench when you do your final torque, especially when you have the studs out of the hubs. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to drive it. These are new wheels as well, so I'll probably drive it five miles and then bring it back and I'll retorque them just to make sure they're good. After that, you're usually pretty good, but they still recommend uh, 20, 50, and 100 miles to check retorque on your lug nuts, especially with new wheels. Well, with that, I'm going to ro roll this thing around to the other side of the shop and get it back up on the alignment rack. Camber's dead on, my cross caster's within three tenths. Um, and I adjusted that one down the minimal amount and it went down almost two degrees. So I think that's where we're gonna leave it because I was at 5-1 up there. And toes just to touch in. Bump steer kit's already set up. Gotta do my cow tracks real quick, which is just uh Touch of pressure with body weight in the car. We'll be wrapping this one up for a test drive.
Well, there you go. Another one done and gone. Chevy 2 Wagon is uh, wrapped up, finished, good to go. Actually already paid for and out of here. Uh, here in Central Ohio, we decided to turn off the rain for a couple of hours. So they came and grabbed their ride and headed back home. So uh, thank you very much to those guys. Uh, they are actually viewers and uh, subscribers of ours as well that brought that vehicle in for us to do what we do. So as always, thank you very much for supporting us. Thank you very much for watching what we do and uh, believing in us as a business. So we wouldn't be here with it if it wasn't for you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of jazz. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.